Hi, this is Krista Walsh. Hey, this is Daniel Arthur Smith. Hey, this is Terry R. Hill. Hey, it's Josh Hayes, and you're listening to 30, 30, 30, 30 Minute Author Interviews with my friend Preston Lay. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of 30 Minute Author Interviews. We do have a giveaway with this week's episode, but before I tell you about it, I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, The Galactic Satori Chronicles by Nick Breaker and Paul E. Hicks. The Galactic Satori Chronicles, a thirst for revenge since one man on a deadly journey through the galaxy in this adrenaline pumping new series. Asher is a young man whose world is turned upside down when he discovers that his fiancé's death has been directly caused by an imminent alien invasion. In a desire to better understand humans in order to destroy them, these aliens are projecting their consciousness into unsuspecting men and women, and in the process are learning exactly how to use humanity's own selfishness and greed as weapons against them. Fueled by emotions that the aliens will never understand, Asher bands together with a group of friends. These four MIT co-eds are more than meets the eye and go to battle with those who are intent on destroying our planet. Asher takes the fight from Earth to an alien spaceship and then to the very planet of the enemy trying to destroy them. The Galactic Satori Chronicles can be found on Amazon where Book 1 Earth is only 99 cents and Book 2 Cron is $2.99. Head on over to Amazon and search for Galactic Satori Chronicles, or head on over to Legendarium.com and check out the show notes for this episode. In the show notes, we will include a link where you can find both Book 1 and Book 2 on Amazon. And now for the giveaway that I was telling you about. This week marks the one-year anniversary of 30-minute author interviews. And I would like to give one person the chance to win a $25 gift card to Amazon. How do you get registered for the giveaway? It's simple. Head on over to legendarium.com, find the show notes for this episode, and in the show notes, let us know what was your favorite part of the episode. It's that simple. Now enjoy our one-year anniversary episode for 30-minute author interviews. Welcome, everybody, to this special one-year anniversary of the 30-Minute Author Interviews podcast. I am Josh Hayes, here with Scott Moon, the host of Keystroke Medium, and this week we're doing a little something different on the program. Today's guest is the host of the 30-Minute Author Interviews podcast, Preston Lay. Preston, welcome to your show. Oh, thanks for having me. This is... This is great. (laughs) Just make yourself at home. Make myself at home on my own show. (laughs) Thank you for inviting me into my show. I appreciate (laughs) it. I have no idea what I just got myself into, but we will we will find out. (laughs) Probably not. I think I I might have prepped for a few questions that y'all might ask, but other than that, nope. Nope. All these questions uh, are not canned, and you don't have any idea what we're going to ask. No, nope. and. uh, I don't even know what we're going to ask. So basically, basically, everything that we do in the pre-show, we always just throw that right out the window. There we yeah. go. So it's it's com- complete chaos. Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> oh, Guard dogs on patrol. Yep, like we talked about. Yeah. Well, here at Thirty Minute Author Interviews, we like to start each episode with a segment we like to call Two Truths and a Lie." I don't know if you've ever heard of this before. I know that on your show. I don't know what your uh, I don't know what your average is for Awful. getting. Uh, yeah, well we're batting we're batting a thousand right now because <laughs> we're starting our stats right at the top. There we go. So we're gonna start this out, and Scott, I'm gonna let you guess, but you better keep us at a thousand because if we drop below a thousand for this, we're I mean that's bad. Bad things are gonna happen. Yeah, then our our stats are already would already be in the tank. It'd be non fortuitous. So <laughs> how how does this work with this? Uh, tr- Two uh, truths and a lie thing. So, all right, I have done two truths and a lie thirty-seven times on the podcast. So my record, I haven't put it up online. I try to get people to guess my my record so far on two truths and a lie is I have gotten out of the thirty-seven, I've gotten twelve right. So <laughs> I am I am twelve and twenty-five. So I'm sure your record will be better than mine. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's better zero, than not we'll get ever zero. getting any of them wrong. That's, I mean, right. that's right. So, 
Well, I do have two truths and a lie about myself prepared, so... Go for it. I will shoot them out to you, and you can figure out which one is the lie. So the first one I have for you is, I have lived in 14 different homes in my life. Number two is, I played soccer in high school, but I never made it to varsity. I was always on the junior varsity team. And the third one is... I say my first concert that I went to was Creed. But if you ask my mom, she'll tell you it was Barney. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> You're bringing in a confounding variable in there. When you bring mom in, things get serious. So Don't be lying about your mom, Preston. That's right. Well, see, but the, the thing that's a little bit awkward with this is that, see, now I know which one I think is not true. But Josh and I can't really go off off chat i guess we could get off in the chat box or something and and compare notes <laughs> and i don't know if there's a time limit y'all know, can or, talk or it out if you want to <laughs> I, yeah I, I have a pretty good idea what it is but i'm scott i'm gonna let you handle this i mean you're gonna let you're gonna let me take the lead i'm, I'm, I'm letting you <laughs> hand i'm handing the the birthday cake off to you and you may put the candles and decorate it as what as much as you like and then serve that's, it back to preston that's the problem when you when you when you start talking about cake you know how am I going to concentrate? That's right. This stuff. <clears throat> so the first, the first one is lived in fourteen homes. Mm-hmm. Um, considering our, our pre-show conversation, that you're <laughs> you're uh, you got guard dogs on patrol. You just moved into a new house and so what's not. I'm going to guess that having lived in fourteen homes is true. Okay. And then the the, the mom thing throws me off a little bit, but I'm going to say that that you only played junior varsity soccer is a lie. I imagine that you did play soccer and that you probably did play varsity soccer in high school. That's my guess that that's the lie. Okay. Do you agree with him, Scott or Josh, or do you want to guess at a different one? There's no pressure just no because pressure. we're both tra- trained interviewers <laughs> and analysis of truth and lies. <laughs> and that Josh and I both been lied to a lot in our, in our lives and careers. It's kind of a backstory there. So Man, no pressure. these aren't even my pants. Uh, yeah, man, that's, not, that's not my crack rock. Gonna, How did that get in there? <laughs> People that don't I'm, know us is going, what are they talking about? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree with Scott that you did play uh, varsity soccer. Well, you got the lie, but y'all are both wrong guessing the lie, though. So in high school, I never played soccer. I, oh. actually, I, count, that as a, I count that as a win. I actually never played sports in high school. I was in the band. So, uh, so when we do, when we look at the stats, since we got the actual lie right, that's right. going to have to go to arbitration. But the reason wrong <laughs> does that mean that we still like we only lose a couple percentage points on that, no, or does that y'all are that's one that, and zero? Oh. Y'all are one, one and zero. Oh. 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 Yes. And if, not, if not, we'd have to have uh, some sort of binding arbitration, you know, to decide. <laughs> <laughs> how that goes but personally we should i should have known better is that when you're doing this stuff you know you don't give too much information you know i should have just given my answer and not explained my answer <laughs> and uh and then what you would be like man those guys are so smart especially the bald one he's the smartest guy in the whole group <laughs> it's the Except power no of the video. shiny head <laughs> i know they have no idea who the bald one is scott well they're going to take a, a educated guess that it could be the one that <laughs> answered all the questions right <laughs> so yes clears I- I have lived in 14 different homes in my life, and no, I'm not military at all. Um, and yes, I say my first concert was Creed, but my mom will tell you she took me to see Barney when I was little. So is that because you don't want to admit to seeing Barney? I, so I you, you, you can be honest. I don't think I ever watched Barney growing up. I know I watched Mr. Rogers, and I know I watched Sesame Street, but I don't remember watching Barney. I thought that was after my time as a kid. Yeah, I think that was so traumatic, you probably blocked that out. But I do remember the Creed concert. Um, there was a band that opened up for Creed. I don't know if you ever heard of them. They're called Jimmy's Chicken Shack. Um, yeah, nope, nope, yeah. never heard of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like I should have heard of them. Their, oh, yeah. uh, their popular song was called High, so I can, I'm can i sure you can guess what that song was about. Um, and Airplanes? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, when we went, I parked behind the Civic Center, so we had to walk by the tour buses to get to the, the door to get in. And when I go to concerts, I get there hours before the doors open, especially for this one because it was general admission. 
And as we're walking towards the buses, me and my friends, I see this guy sitting next to one of the buses. I was like, hey, look at that homeless guy sitting by the buses because he was wearing, you know, just baggy (laughs) pants and shirt didn't look good. Pants didn't look good. And then we get closer and I was like, dude, that's not a homeless guy. That is the bass player for Jimmy's Chicken Shack. So we went <laughs> up. Been a base, yeah, yeah, we yeah. went up to him and just started chatting with him. And we were actually about to take him to dinner. Um, I don't know how we were going to get everybody in the car that I had, but uh, <laughs> we were about to take him out to dinner. And then the security guard walks up and says, "We have free food for you downstairs." And so, thanks, buddy. Yeah, thanks nice. a lot, man. Thanks a lot, security guard. Yeah, that's so, we almost had part. him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had him in my car. So yeah, that could have been another, another for another episode of Two Truths and a Lie. I'm sure you could work that into a narrative um, about how you kidnapped been. a bass player of Jimmy's Chicken Shack That's or right. something. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you've interviewed uh, several. I think it's 37. Did you say? But I think you've done more than that. Oh yeah, I've I've been. Uh, uh, we we uh, this is going to be episode 58. This episode. And. Um, Every time you start an episode, you ask their guest, your guest to, um, to tell your audience who they are and what do they do. So, Preston, who are you and what do you do? Well, I am Preston, Preston Lay, and um, I am, I guess you can say, the founder and owner of uh, The Legendarium. At least that's what my business card says. Started The Legendarium originally just as a blog and written interviews and turned it into a podcast now. Um, got a review team that does reviews. Um, we try to focus on indie authors, but of course we, you know, talk to published authors as well and review, um, published authors books, but, uh, we, we, we try to focus more on the indie side of the publishing world. So that is what we do. I try to bring a new, uh, author interview every week. I'm curious about, I, so when you talk about starting a website to review, uh, to do reviews, I started a website because I'm a writer and then I needed to have some place for fans to go. And then for content, I was just like, well, I read all the time, so I'll just put up book reviews every once in a while. Um, so what was your intent or uh, what, what did you want to do with the site when you uh, started it up and, and why did you start doing uh, book reviews? <laughs> Originally, I had no idea what was going to go on. Um, I have been following the indie publishing world for, uh, I think it was going on two years. Um, and I was starting to get signed books from, from authors in and putting them on my shelf. Um, and Kevin G Summers, uh, I chat with him online and he sent me a message and he was like, Hey, you know, as much as you support the indie community and, and share when you do reviews, when you share, you know, share what you put up on Amazon, you know, you should just start a blog. Um, and I was like, dude, I have no idea what I would even blog about. And he was like, just share what you like, do what you do now, share, share authors that you enjoy, share what you're reading. And then I was like, uh, okay. And I started, you know, looking at other blogs that day. And I was like, you know, I saw, I saw this other place. Uh, it, it, what they didn't focus on authors. I forget actually what they focused on. But they did a written interview. I think uh, I, I wish I could remember what site it was, but I can't. I was like, well, I could probably do something like that. So uh, I came up with ten questions um, and sent that uh, ten questions uh, for a written segment called Ten Questions with, and uh, just started sending invites to all the authors I had, you know, friended on Facebook, saying, "Hey, I'm starting this blog. You know, would you like to come on? And I have a written interview. Would you mind doing it?" and uh, I thought I was going to get a lot of rejections, um, but I don't think I got rejected by anybody. Um, and so that's, I guess that's when it, you know, I turned the focus on the blog to interviews and reviews. Um, I put reviews up on Amazon whenever I read books. So I would just put the, put the reviews on my blog and share them through my blog. I'd, I'd still put them on Amazon, but I'd share them through my blog instead of the Amazon link. And so basically, uh, then when I started thinking more and more about uh, the blog and what I wanted to do, that's when I came up with shining a light on indie publishing is what I wanted to do. And so that's kind of where it's gone since then. Do you remember the first um, review or blog post that you posted on your website? 
Uh, the first one that I did was, I think it was a picture of my bookcase, and then maybe, I think I, I think I did like three in one day or two days, and I think I put a link to all the book reviews I did on Amazon. I created a post with, and I did it alphabetical by the author's last name, I believe, and I, I put all their books that I've re- reviewed so far on Amazon, um, and you know, hyperlinked it over to Amazon. Um, and put that up. You, you mentioned um, a little bit <clears throat> earlier that you had a review team or a team of people that d- did reviews um, with you. Or how did you get that set up? Or is that something you did on purpose? Or you sought those people out? Or or can you tell us about that? I started uh, seeking out reviewers when um, when when my number of written reviews was getting to be a lot. Um, I was focusing more on getting interviews and formatting them for the site. And so my reading time started going down. And so I had a a fan of the the blog. Um, I I put up a post saying that I was looking for uh, a reviewer. At this time, it was just one reviewer. And I was saying I was, you know, looking for someone to do reviews um, on the site. And I had one reviewer said, hey, uh, this person does a lot of indie author reviews. They post them on Amazon. Um, maybe he would be a good fit for you. And so I said, okay. So I, I sent sent the guy a message. It was Chris Freed. Um, and he accepted. And so he's been, he, he was the first reviewer that I got. Um, that was in January of 2016. And then by that, okay. by that summer, I, uh, my reading time was going down and down again because I started the podcast. Um, and so I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on Chris to feel like he was the main reviewer. So then I put up another post that we were seeking for other reviewers as well. Um, so that way Chris didn't feel like he had to give me a review once a week or every other week or whatever. I, I didn't want him to feel pressured. Um, as long as the site stays fun, that's what I want it to be. I don't want there to be a lot of pressure for them. Um, I don't assign them books to read or anything. I just tell them, read what you want to do. The only thing I don't do on my side is erotica. So whatever you want to review, just do it. That was going to be my next question. If you had um, certain type of genres that you focused on, or if it was more just your interests and the interests of your, of your reviewers. That's why I got a uh, more than one reviewer. Um, uh, Cause you know, I, I noticed that that Chris would kind of stay in the same genre. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, I need to kind of spread out a little bit. And so that's why um, I started, when I started looking for more reviewers, I, I asked them what what genres did they focus on the most? What did they enjoy reading? So I wanted to have a variety of of uh, genres reviewed on, on the page. On average, how many do you think you put up a, a week or a month? Uh, it's, it's slowed down, um, recently. Um, that's probably my fault. Um, nothing that they've done. Um, I'm just, uh, I got to a point where I was starting to look at numbers. And so the reviews were not bringing in really too much traffic. And Mm so I'm trying to revamp the reviews to get more people coming to the reviews. Um, I want people to feel like, oh, the legendarians put up a review. I need to see what what they're saying about this. Is eventually, you know, that's what I would like people to think about when they see reviews. Is you know, oh, they just put up a new review. I need to go see what they say about it. And so I'm trying right. to figure out the best way to to do that. Um, but but before I started trying to revamp, I would say we were. Uh, between the reviewers that I had, it was easily one to two reviews a week almost. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Josh and I started out doing some video reviews a while back, and we quickly got overwhelmed with, with other things, and that's kind of fallen a little bit by the wayside. So maybe we should find some reviewers too. I don't know. So like, I think reviews are so important to the to authors in general, whether you're indie or traditionally published, and – there's so much out there. A, a good review that brings, you know, some actual quality. I, I'm trying to how to say this. That 
gives you good information about the book is important because, yeah. you know, there's a lot of books out there and picking the right one. Having I, I, I read reviews for most of the books that I buy now. I didn't used to, but now I almost always look at at least two or three of the reviews. Yeah, and, th- you know, the, the problem is uh, – I guess the problem I I feel with the reviews, and that's why I'm trying to figure out how to make it better, is when people read reviews, they're just going to read them on Amazon, or they're going to read it on Goodreads. So right. you got to figure out a way to get people to go to the site to actually look at your reviews, search your site using the, the search bar, and see if we reviewed the book. Um, that's... That's the the hard part about it is you know if people are going to look at a book they're they're probably looking on Amazon or you know Barnes and Noble Books a Million they're just going to look at the reviews there so how how to get the traffic is is the hard part when it comes to reviews. Uh, so you you kind of transitioned from doing the the ten question written reviews to doing your um, podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about why you made the transition to go to the podcast side of interviewing? Yeah. Um, so at the time, I was listening to uh, Hank's podcast a lot, and I enjoyed listening to that. And That's uh, the Author Stories podcast yeah, with author, Hank Garner. Author Stories podcast with Hank Garner. And, um, that's five bucks, Hank. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it put on and, your tab. I, w- I was enjoying my, my written interviews, but then I had an interview with an author named Lindy Spencer. Um, and one of the questions that I asked during the 10 questions with was, um, do, 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 what is something that many people might not know about you? And her answer to that was, as I mentioned above, I enjoyed working with stain- I enjoy working with stained glass. Among other things, I've made three windows and have one more to go to complete to completely replace the windows in our garage door. It would probably be done already, except I'm not sure what design I'd like to hang in there for eternity. And I was like, I read that and I was just like, oh man, that is awesome. Yeah, I would I would love cool. to learn more. Like why? Why did you get into stained glass? What was it that got you into stained glass? You know, what interests you about stained glass? But it was 10 questions with. I asked the same 10 questions every week. Um, And so I couldn't couldn't ask it. And so that's when I started thinking about a podcast. I started thinking about a podcast. uh, I seriously started thinking about it in, it was like near the end of, was it no, it was in November, I think. November of uh, 2015, I started thinking about it, researching equipment, microphones, what I would need to do it, Um, and then slowly over the next five months, learned, trained. Um, I had Hank Garner teach me some of the stuff he did to, to do his podcast, and then we launched it on June 22nd, 2016. Did, uh, it's a very daunting process. Starting a podcast, um, I think there's a lot of people are interested in it, but we may have to talk more about that in the interview. Well, I think, like I remember when we started out our show, we had absolutely no idea what we were going to do. Absolutely none. We said, hey, let's <laughs> let's get on the internet and talk about some stuff. And we mm-hmm. did, basically. And, and, and we didn't really come into uh, the zone uh, of our show probably – until, what do you think, Scott? Maybe eight months ago, nine months ago, six months ago, yesterday. I don't know when, but uh, it was last fall, t- kind of towards the end of the summer. We started to really pick up. We had some early guests that really kind of helped. I think if we hadn't had some of those early guests on the show that we made friends with, you know, as far as our online type friends, and um, I think that started us down a path to the show being more than it would have been if we just. St- kept talking just to ourselves. Right. I'm still trying to learn the best format. Um, I'm, I still tweak things a little bit. Um, I added the two truths and the lie. Uh, you know, I've done it 37 times. Um, so, you know, it, I mean, it hasn't been too long that I've been doing that. It, 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 I mean, if you look at time in general, you know, 37 is not much. Um, 
and I've I've changed things here and there. I think I'm starting to hit my stride with the podcast. You know, a year into it, I think I'm starting to hit my stride. Um, the one problem that I have with the podcast is I have the hardest time keeping it to 30 minutes. Sometimes I can do it <laughs> no problem. Oh, we're going right over today. I'm That's right. So, <laughs> but you know, that re- sometimes you just get going with somebody and they mention something. And that creates another question, which creates another question, which creates another question. And next thing you know is I'm, I'm at an hour. And so it's, it's really hard to shut down a good conversation when you're really connecting yeah. with somebody, you know, and, and you know, we could probably go for a lot longer than an hour and a half, to be honest. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to keep it as close to 30 or 40 minutes as I can, but you know, sometimes I just can't. Some, something you said a, a minute ago reminded me of what Josh was telling me as we started to kind of figure out that we were going to keep doing podcasting in, in, the, in the YouTube show. Um, what, what was the statistics, Josh, on most podcasts only go a certain number of shows, and then they, if they make it past that, it's kind of like yeah, they got it's, a chance. It's, uh, it, they, they say the magic number is 10. If you can get to 10 episodes – uh, and continue to do it, then you you personally will be on your way to being to to having a show. Um, but there's a lot of people that will do like one, two, or three, or four episodes. They don't see anything from it, and then they just quit. I enjoy it a lot. Um, yeah, it. I mean, it's something I look forward to. You know, week in and week out is when I'm going to interview an author because. Sometimes I'm interviewing an author I've never read before, and so getting to learn about them and their and and that's the whole that's the whole point of the podcast. Um, I've had people ask me what what makes mine different from other author interviews out there, and so you know I'll kind of know who that person listens to, um, but I basically I tell people the way I come about my podcast is I'm not an author, and so. I want to learn about the person's books and the person as a person and not just a name on the cover. And so I'm not necessarily interested in how somebody writes their books, what's their writing process. Um, right. I'm more interested in learning about the person as a person and about their books where uh, your podcast, Keystroke Medium, I, I enjoy watching y'all's. I'm not an author, but I enjoy it. Um, y'all want to learn about their writing process and, and y'all, y'all really get into the details of how they create what they create. And it's, you know, in a way it's, it's almost the same show, but in, like I said, in a way it's not because y'all are authors. And so y'all are wanting to learn and better your craft. And I'm wanting to learn about people and their stories. I know that with our show, we, uh, we started out doing a whole crap ton of research and then now every show it comes down to like 10 minutes beforehand and we're like, oh crap, what, <laughs> what, we need to do something here. What are we doing? Uh, do you do a lot of research that goes into your, to, to all of your episodes and uh, what's your criteria to, uh, to have a, an author on? If, if we wanted to say, hey, if you're an author and you wanted to get a hold of Preston, what, what criteria do you have? Are there any prerequisites? There's really no pre prerequisites that that I have. Um, I just as long as you don't write erotica, I, I'm pretty much open to whoever. Uh, and then when it goes to my process before each show, I try to find what I can about the person online. I try to go and listen to any podcast that they've been on. Uh, I'll search and see if they have a YouTube channel. Watch a couple of the videos. See if there's any interviews on YouTube. Or I'll search Google and see if there's any interviews that they've done online. Uh, so that way I can kind of get a feel of who the person is um, and see if there's anything in those interviews that I think is interesting that I would like to dig into more than what they did in whatever, whatever interview or podcast it was on. Um, so I try to do that for every episode. Do you and, ever go – oh, go ahead. Unless it's someone that I read. Uh, if it if it's an author that I've read and I've talked to online a lot or whatever, then there's really not too much research I, I do just because I feel like I have a good uh, relationship with them. So, yeah, 
I was going to ask, do you have or do you plan to have authors on more than once? And you think that would change the interview? Um, like on a second or third time? I have had uh, a couple authors reach out and want to come on again. Um, I'm not opposed to it. But within the first year, I didn't want to interview an author more than once right. um, for, for the episode just because I'm trying to shine a light on any publishing. And so... Um, I don't necessarily want to do the same authors over and over and over and over, but you know, if there's an author that people want me to have on again, I'll, I'll have them back on. Um, cause they'll always have a new book coming out. Um, so there's always something new to talk about since they're going to have a new book or working on a new project or, or whatever it is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure the conversation can go many different ways. Um, there were a few times in the beginning when I was just starting the podcast with, a the two I can think of off the top of my head were Chris Porto and Sarah Nofke. I asked them every question I could under the sun. Um, I sent y'all the list of questions that I have and I keep on hand in case I feel the conversation might start dragging. I mm -hmm. asked them almost every question on that sheet plus any questions I had about their books. And so those episodes went for over an hour a piece. Um, and if you would have asked me a few months later if I could have had them back on again and it be a different podcast with them, I don't think I could have because we did so much in their episode. Um, right. But then, they really dug into it. Yeah, but then, you know, but but with other authors, like last week I just had Jacob Cooper on. Um, we could have kept going. Uh, I mean, we, we recorded an hour and 20. His episode is around an hour and 20 minutes. I, I, I could have kept going with him. Uh, Michael Kramer was the same way. Um, his was an hour and 20 minutes. Probably could have kept going even longer with him. Um, yeah. So I guess it also depends on, on the person as well and how, how open they are um, and, and how detailed they get it just for, for, for the show. So it, I guess it really just depends really how much I talked about with the author before and then how much they, they open up is if it could be a good second episode or not. If they start talking about stained glass in there that they're making for their garage or something, you might go down or some side paths or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so after a year of doing this, do you have any, uh, any uh, guests that, that, that uh, come to mind as, as uh, some of your funnest shows or, or your favorite guests that you've had on? What are the most memorable uh, episodes you've had this year? Oh man, that's uh, that's like asking you know you hear that's like asking me who's my favorite kid. Um, <laughs> they, oh, if my kids ask me that. I say none of y'all. That's right, y'all y'all suck. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, every author's been it's fun because it's different. Um, I was extremely surprised when Michael Kramer responded back to me. Um, that was a I thought it was going to be a really challenging interview because I'd never interviewed a narrator before, uh, someone that did audiobooks. So right. I wasn't a hundred percent sure how I was going to do that episode. And that, that one scared me when I started recording it. But once he just got talking, it was, um, it was so much fun. Um, the, like I said, the, the Jacob Cooper we just released last week was, was another good one. Um, the Savant Nouvelle, one that I did was almost a year's worth of planning uh, to get him on. Oh, good. Um, yeah. I was excited and surprised. You know, uh, I was excited to have him on. Like I, we we booked it. I think it was man. It was it had to have been. I think nine months before his book released, book two. Wow. Um, we we booked that one because uh, I discovered him right when book one had come out. It only been out for like a month. A month and a half and so he was busy with other interviews and promotions and traveling so we just decided to wait until his second book came out um and that 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 was another good one um i looked at let me see if i can pull it up real quick the other week i looked at uh i look at my numbers of course just to see what what my numbers are are looking like um and I, I, I can't remember if I released, if I put up online who the top rated episodes were. Yeah. Um, but as of May 24th, when 
when I looked at my numbers. Uh, the top, the top ten episodes. Uh, Daniel Arthur Smith is number one. Uh, oh, Den- wow. Dennis E. Taylor is number two. Uh, Savon Nouvelle is number three. Samuel Peralta is number four. Artie Cabrera is number five. Rep Bruno is number six. Uh, Franklin Horton was number seven. Max Gladstone was number eight. Uh, Terry R. Hill was number nine. And then Sarah Nofke was number ten. Very cool. So, and I'm sure y'all want to know where y'all rank since y'all were on the show. Uh, 937. Josh, you're 938. Number... <laughs> Josh, you're, <laughs> you're uh, at, when I looked, you were number 13. The 13th. Yes. That's top a lucky number. Episode. Right? Oh. And then, Scott, you were number 21. 21's good because that's legal to drink. So. Blackjack. Well, you know, 21 out of. Uh, yeah, at Blackjack. This, at this time, when I looked at it, I'd only had 54 episodes out. So. It's, That's cool. It's in the top. Yeah. Well, Y'all. and it's funny that you, you mentioned the, our, our interviews is that <clears throat> I listened to your interview of Josh. Of course, I've known Josh for a while. Um, and I actually was very fascinated with that because you guys covered some things like um, you went into some details about him growing up, you know, um, as a military brat. And my wife's a military brat. And, but I, there's a whole bunch of part of that stuff. It's like I didn't know that about Josh. He's holding back on me. He had to get Preston Lee <laughs> to get it, get, it, get it out of him. And he That's was like, funny. that wasn't a lie, Josh. You're a liar. And I'm like, all right. But yeah, no, and I, and I really enjoyed listening to that and, and all the other episodes, too. So um, some of the ones that you mentioned on there, and Josh can probably verify this, we've had a couple of them. Mm-hmm. And they, they also, like our best, um, highest ranking ones or most viewed or whatever are similar. And I'm yeah. thinking the one that popped out of his Dennis e. Taylor is one of yeah. our most watched episodes. Mm-hmm. And he, he, of course, wrote the book, uh, uh, We Are Bob, We Are Legion. Yep. And, he's got, and then the second one's out, too, I think, as well. But, yeah, so that, that's very interesting. I'm not good at the statistics and stuff like that. I have to have Josh explain it to me. It's kind <laughs> of fun to me to see what episodes rank where because sometimes episodes I really enjoyed aren't the top rank. Uh, right. or, or aren't in the top, which, you know, to me kind of can be surprising. Um, I guess that that's the other challenge. You know, when I mentioned reviews, the challenge was getting people to actually go to your site and read your review because they can just go to Amazon. So why should they come to your site? Um, that's one of the hard things with interviewing indie authors is a lot of people only want to listen to authors that they read. But the point that I've been trying to do in my podcast is I'm trying to – I tell people I want to interview your favorite author, but I also want to introduce you to your new favorite author. Or I want to uh, introduce you to a a new favorite book that you'll read because there's there's authors that have come on your show. There's authors that have come on Hank's show that I might not have ever read if I hadn't listened to to, to y'all's show. And that's just that's just the fun thing. It's just taking a chance, listen to the episode. You might get an author you don't know anything about, but because of the interview, you might have a new favorite book or a new favorite author. It's kind of like getting a recommendation from a friend. Most of most of the best books I've read in the last few years have been been recommended to me in one way or another. And that's something that a podcast or or a good blog can do that the reviews on Amazon can't. I mean, the reviews on Amazon are great because they're very convenient for a shopper. They're right there by the buy button. Um, but I think people in today's age of technology really would like to have some interaction. You know, people want to find their tribe and mm-hmm. and listen to a podcast and um, and connect in that way. Is I think it's a good way to do it. I mean, that that's kind of been our our experience. We we stay in contact with a lot more of our our listeners than I would have anticipated when we started out. Yeah. All right. Well, now that we got the intro out of the way, we're going to get (laughs) me to the program here (laughs) and uh, get to some questions that I know all of your uh, audience uh, have been just on the edge of their seat waiting to know the answer to. So uh, the first one is, uh, do you have any uh, coming upcoming projects or, or guests that you'd like to, to talk about or hope, uh, guests that you're trying to get on the show or that you'd be interested in talking with? I'm always trying to get guests on. I'm I'm actually, as of re- as of the day we're recording this, um, 
I believe I'm booked until the end of August or oh, be- well, beginning of October. Um, hang on a second. I'll go grab my calendar, see if there's anybody I want to tease to y'all. Okay. Oh, that'd be cool. We like teasers. Um, I guess I should go back and touch on something y'all asked. You, you asked if there's a pre- prerequisite for coming on the show, and like I said, there's not. But I always tried to schedule an episode at a time that benefits the author. Um, right. It's a good policy. I always wanted to do when there's a book release coming out, when they have a book bub, or they're marking down one of their books. Um, I know indie authors want to get the word out about their stuff anyway, but I also want it to be beneficial for you. So that's that's one thing I always say, or when I'm asking people to come on, um, I'll ask them, do you have something coming out soon that, that, that you'd like to promote? Um, a release, a book bub. Um, but with that being said, I see. Is there anybody I want to tease? Um, I went to uh, a book con. I guess you call it a book con. It was, it was an author event called the Roanoke Author Invasion. Um, that was back in, where's my notes? In April. Met some really cool people there. Um, so a couple of the authors that I met that are coming on the show um, that I have scheduled, uh, there is an author, uh, make sure I say her name right. Her, her name is Sarah uh, Negavidic, I think is how she says it. Um, she's coming on. A, uh, I've read the f- first book and novella in her series. Um, I'm excited to get her on. She was fun to hang out with at the uh, at the event. I hung out with her for a little bit. She's she's really fun. Um, I met an author named Stacy Rourke. I think is how she says her last name. Um, her and another author, she's co-writing a book, are going to be coming on. Uh, I met them there, and then I met a husband and wife duo. They they each write. They don't write together. Um, their names are Aaron and Deke, D-E-E-K, Rue. She does, like, uh, fantasy books. Um, and he has done mystery, suspense, and thrillers. Those are all indie authors. And then there's a couple published authors. Um, I'm not going to drop any names, but there's a couple published authors I'm working on trying to get on the show. If there was one author that you, if you could only get one author next year on the show, who would it be? If I could get one author, and <laughs> Josh is going to agree with me 100% on this one. I know what he's going to say. Brandon <laughs> Sanderson. All... If I could yeah. get Brandon Sanderson on. The Brandon Sanderson plug. I would love to get Brandon Sanderson on. his. I haven't fully read many of his books, but what you read of his is just unbelievable i don't know how he writes the way that he does i would love to get to learn a little bit more about him the the inspiration for his books where he gets his ideas how he came up with the you know the whole the whole how how all the books are part of the same big universe i think i've heard his books described as is it cosmere is that how you say it the cosmere the cosmere is like the galaxy we live in and each story is on it on, on, on a different planet in the galaxy. Right. Um, I, I would, I, I would love to know where he came up with all that. What, how he writes, why he also is a professor at BYU. Um, and I thought I heard, and it, it'd be cool to, to talk about. I thought I heard when Hank Garner had him on, I thought he said in the interview that, or was it Hanks or someone else's? But I thought I heard that he doesn't take a salary from the university, that he told them to take whatever they were going to pay him and put it in a scholarship. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. So Yeah, that's cool. If the, you know, I think it would be cool to find out, are there any students that he's had that he's become a fan of their writing after they would be, graduated from yeah. school? So That would be an excellent question to get answered. Yeah, I, yeah, if... I have reached out and I haven't heard back. So, but 
I would love to get get Brandon Brandon Sanderson would be a fun one. I'm sure he could do it. I would just need to reach out to him. But I, I don't know. Hugh Howie, I think, would be fun to have on. He he did the ten questions with um, when I had the written interview. But I know that he's sailing the world on his boat, so I don't know really how much. <laughs> Internet time he really has. <laughs> so, right. What's the Wi-Fi like in the middle of the ocean? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I I think it'd be fun to to talk to him. I think one person I need to get on that that I met at the author invasion that I've I've, I've been friends with online, and I believe she did ten questions with, as well was uh, Risa Walker. I need to get her on the show. I th- I think she'd be a good show. She she was fun to talk to. All right, uh, Scott, you want to do the pink one? Oh, yeah, because this is the most awesome thing about uh, about our show. It's a completely original idea. We come up with this joke we like to ask, and basically goes something like this. So if a penguin walks through a door, right now wearing a sombrero, what does he say and why is he here? So I've gotten an answer for this that I'm going to play off of. I never knew why the penguin was wearing a sombrero, until I interviewed Jacob Cooper. And I never had a name for the penguin until I had an author crochet me a penguin wearing a sombrero. So the penguin walks in the door and he says, my name's Tux. I'm sunburned. Where's the queso? (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So there we go. That's that's the best penguin (laughs) story yet, I'm sure. Probably I can't not. Remember. I'm not an author, I, so <laughs> I know that I'm sunburned, so I feel Tuck's pain. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Tuck's the penguin, and this is my friend Josh. Yeah. We're all burnt to redness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so before we wrap this episode up, uh, do you have any advice, whether it be for podcasting or life, that you would like to share with your audience? I think the lo- I think the most common advice that I've receive that authors have given on the show and i think it's the best advice that maybe you can get because it applies not only to podcasting being an author or life is to never give up if there is if there's something that you want to do keep striving for it um you know at some point i i i I would love for this to be my full-time job so i just have to keep striving for it so Keep doing what you're doing. Pursue that passion that you have. Um, my wife has done it by graduating pharmacy school um, through some of the the trials that we've gone through over the past, you know, this year's 10 years that we've been married. Um, she found a love for, uh, for photography. So she's pursued that, self-taught herself how to do that, um, and has – she's an amazing photographer. Um, so – if you find something that you're passionate about, do what you need to do in order to learn it. Do what you need to do in order to do it. So that way you have something that you love doing. I think that's probably the best advice you can have or get. I agree. I think that's extremely important. And I think that uh, um, who was I have a quote written up on my wall. Oh, uh, it's Ray Bradbury. It says, you only fail – you fail only if you stop writing is a Ray Bradbury quote. And that can apply to anything. You know, you can't, can't win if you don't play. Yeah. Well, thank you, Josh and Scott, for taking over 30 minute author interviews this week and turning the tables on me and asking me the questions that I ask the authors. Absolutely. Thanks for letting us do this. It was great fun. It's been awesome. It was a lot of fun. That is all the time that we have for this week's episode of 30 Minute Author Interviews. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you for making 30 Minute Author Interviews a success. I look forward to the next year of great author interviews. And stay tuned. Right after the outro, Scott and Josh ask me a few more bonus questions. That's coming up here in just a few seconds. Don't forget to head on over to legendarium.com and find the show notes for this episode. In the show notes, you're going to find the giveaway where I'm giving one person the chance to win a $25 gift card to Amazon. And you'll also find in the show notes the link to our sponsor, the Galactic Satori Chronicles. Check them out and let them know that you heard about them right here on 30-Minute Author Interviews. And don't forget to rate and review the podcast that help us get discovered by new listeners. 
I would also like to thank a few of our Patreon supporters. I would like to thank Nick Breaker, Third Scribe, and Maggie Stewart Grant. They're supporting 30-minute author interviews through Patreon. They're also receiving the Patreon-only podcast, 10 Questions With. Visit patreon.com slash legendarium and find out how you can support 30-minute author interviews as well. And until next time, guys, remember to stay legendary. I'm going to eat my Pop-Tart. Eat your Pop-Tart. If you were stuck in a zombie apocalypse, which one of your favorite book characters would you want to be stuck with and why? See, now, I should have known that you were going to ask me this, right? But, (laughs) of course... We're tricksy like that. Yeah. Of course I didn't prepare. Um, Man, you know, I've had people give the obvious answer, Superman, because he's invincible pretty much, except for Kryptonite or... Hulk because he can smash um whatever but if man if there was I keep coming back to to one character in in a book that I've read but he wouldn't do me any good um it it's uh <laughs> like a sidekick maybe <laughs> <laughs> for some reason the character I keep thinking of is uh Themis um I think that's the character's name from Sleeping Giants it's the robot in Sleeping Giants but the reason why I say you can't pick him is because you have to have two people that control him. One person controls the upper body. One person controls the lower body. But in order to control the lower body, your knees have to bend in the opposite direction. So that one's kind of out. But he would be amazing to have. Uh, I think Themis would be amazing to have. So It depends on the rules of the question because that might be a way to force you getting three people instead of one. Because we said right. one, you say, well, this is my choice, but it comes with two other people. Yeah. That's, yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'll pick Themis from Sleeping Giants because then I get Kara Rasnick, I think is her character's name, and um, is it Vincent Couture? Because he already has his, he had his knees jacked up and they just made him bend the other way. So uh, that way I could go into this amazing robot and just step all over the zombies and crush them because like, zombies wouldn't have a chance. That's I right. like how you take, uh, like just rip out that executive privilege and like slap it down <laughs> to the thing and say, this is my show. I don't, I get more than one. Yeah, I get this, is, this, this is my show. The question you meant to ask. That's Josh, right. Is this? <laughs> uh, oh, that's too funny. But you know, if I can't go with him, I'm going to have to go on, uh, feelings based on a movie i just watched i would have to have wonder woman but i would want gal gadot gal gadot's wonder woman because i wanted to stand up and cheer at the end of that movie because her wonder woman was amazing so if i can't have the robot i'll take wonder woman i think you're probably not alone in that you know yeah so that was an excellent movie and, and i was worried because I think that's the reason they waited so long to do that movie is it could have been messed up very easily. Yes. And it and did, did a good job. Yeah, and I, I had my hopes let down a little bit with Batman versus Superman. So I, was I haven't ex- seen it yet. I was excited for Batman versus Superman, and it wasn't what I thought. And so I was excited for Wonder Woman, and I was scared that it was not going to meet my expectations. But it far exceeded my expectations, and I hope they do another Wonder Woman movie and another Wonder Woman movie and another one. I think that's probably going to happen. So this, so you can answer this question for me. It's not on, on our, on our pre-plan thing because true to our form, we always go off topic, but <laughs> um, so I was trying to explain this to my wife, the appeal of Batman versus Superman as a concept. Mm-hmm. Now, I haven't seen the movie yet. Um, and it's a long story why, but um, so what do you think is, why is that a concept that people wanted to see? Because I was like, of course people want to see Batman versus Superman. Didn't you ever grow up on a playground or something? Don't you talk about these things? But I mean, what, what was your take on, on that? I was, I've was i never been into comics. So when people start talking about like – I'm not sure if that was based off a comic or not. Um, so when people start saying, well, compared to the comic and this happened in the comic, I, I, I just – I don't know. I, I didn't read them. Um, but I think the reason why people maybe wanted to see it is because it's two of people's favorite superheroes 
supposedly right. going to be going at it. And so who's who's the better superhero? You know, is it Batman who's just a, you know, I guess DC's Iron Man. He's just a rich guy that can afford gadgets. Or is it going to be somebody with real superpowers that, that, that will win? Um, yeah. I think that's probably the appeal to it. But then, you know, you had Wonder Woman showing up in it. Um you that had. was supposedly the best part of the movie, according to my uh, my family. <laughs> yeah, she she was she was definitely really good in the movie. Um, I mean, the fight scene. I mean, just the trailers for that movie. If you didn't get excited for that movie watching the trailers, you'd probably check your pulse because the trailers <laughs> were amazing. But then it's just like it just seemed like the best parts of the movie were were in the trailer. But then I also heard that, you know, there were so many scenes that were cut out and stuff that was just redone or whatever. I've got the extended cut when they released it on DVD. I haven't watched it yet. I've heard that there are questions answered in the extended cut that just left you hanging. And you're like, why is this even in the movie? Right. Um, it's, I've heard Mm -hmm. it's a more complete movie and makes more sense. If you, you watched that version, but I I haven't watched it yet. I've watched I may have to extended, skip. Go ahead, Josh. I said I've I've watched the extended version, and uh, I didn't see the original version, so I don't know what the differences are. But I I know that watching the extended version, I could say, yes, okay, this is a really good um, story, but as an action movie, it was way too long, mm-hmm. and. and uh, and I, I was I was kind of conflicted on the the way that the story went, but as a as a story, like looking at as a, as a writer's point of view, the extended cut it was almost like they decided we're not going to make this a novella. It's got to be the novel to get everything in there, and so it is a good like written like complete story. Uh, whether or not I really liked it or not, meh, I don't know. I, I probably won't watch it again. Right, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. The um, extended extended versions are almost always a letdown for me. The only exception has been if you've ever seen a movie called The Kingdom of Heaven, and it was kind of a you know it was a historical action thriller. And I watched the first one; it was okay, but then my father in law gave me the extended one, and it's it's ten times better. Oh, really? Because it just really is, and that's a whole other segue. But I watched the oh. uh, the extended edition of The Martian. Um, it had been a while since I watched The Martian. I mean, I think it's only like an extra 10 or 15 minutes. I thought it was great. I love The Martian. I do too. That's a good one. Which leads exa- directly into our next question. Actually, it doesn't lead to the next question at all, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it. So the next question I wanted to ask, I have it highlighted and read on my show notes because that's how I remember stuff. As If you had a time machine, where would you travel and why? And this question's not for you, Josh. It's oh. for our host guest. <laughs> it's for the host guest. Um, I think I'm going to have to do the, like the obvious cliche answer. I want to travel to the future just because I want to see what technology comes out. Are we going to end up like the people in Wally and just be fat and lazy and sit in chairs all day and do nothing? Um, or is the future just going to be something just completely epic. I so, think epic. Yeah. Or, or bold. I hope. So, Somebody yeah. said, we had some training and they said, nobody knows what your cell phone will be able to do in the future. And, I, and my first reaction was jetpack. That's right. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> That'd be I pretty personally neat. want to go in the future to see if our shows are still on. <laughs> you go like 15 <laughs> years in the future. I'm like, are we still doing shows? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I need to get some hair club for men actually going. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll be so old we'll be talking and like not even hearing each other and be like two shows going at once what was that scott what? I, I don't that's, know. that's the guest a question <laughs> <laughs> and then and, and then you'd sit there uh, at your halfway mark well we've hit the 30 minute mark we like to thank our sponsors plum, <laughs> plum juice or whatever yeah. viagra that's viagra. right that's right <laughs> oh man uh it's so, not just for breakfast anymore. That's right. <laughs> so if you were going to have one superpower, what would it be and why? See, wasn't that smooth? That was. Great that, segue. Good. That, that was very nice. Um, <laughs> one superpower. I don't know. For, for some reason, the thing that keeps popping in my head 
is uh, invincibility. I think would be pretty cool. Um, because I hate stubbing my toe when I'm walking around the bed on oh. <laughs> on on the ramp that we have for our dogs and feeling like I broke my toe. So maybe invincibility, so that stuff doesn't bother me. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. I could see lots of benefits to that. I mean, it's very practical. You know, it, it would help in zombie apocalypse. It would right. help in toe stubbing scenarios. Um, zombies would go to bite me, and their teeth would just break off. You know, you're like why are you even bothering me, zombie? That's right. I'm a robot, and I'm also invincible. That's right. 